I'm actually kind of excited about this one because uh, like I've listened to, I've listened to four or five podcasts about this. Oh, nice. Um, by no level am I an expert, but I now I'm definitely like, I'm intrigued and can kind of see like how, uh, like obviously how this could be used for marketing, but you know, just for certain customers, I'm looking at it. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. I, don't know what I mean, I think what's interesting for me about it is like um, getting your thoughts on it because you have a, obviously a process um, and a framework for how you build websites um, and how you um, interview people as well to extract the information that you need for their, their website, you know? So regardless of a story brand or not, for the fact that there's a framework and a process is the most compelling part about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I ever tell you why, uh, like how I torched my knees a few years ago? How you do what? Torch your knee? No. Yeah. So basically, like when I got out of playing basketball yeah. at 40, I decided like uh I was gonna touch the rim again. You know, give give Duncan one more go, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And part of that was shooting at like it was hitting a hundred threes a day. At first it started with shooting a thousand threes. That's a lot of threes, man. It was a lot, man. I, I was significantly better at 40 for no fucking reason. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, really, really zero reason. And then all it did is just fucking tank my knees. You know, I, had I just stopped at like, you know, hit 50 and go mm -hmm. ever, but I don't know, man, there was six months where I wasn't playing anybody, but I was kicking their asses, you know? <laughs> did you play in high school? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, did, okay. we did like rep teams. We did a bunch of all that kind of stuff. What um position did you play growing up? Um, Depending. You know, right. usually two or three, right? Like mm -hmm. your teams, I would play point guard, but you know, I didn't have that handle. I was more, you know, growing up in like the Michael Jordan phase. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm. I know. I'll try to score on a reverse layup, doing a fadeaway or some bullshit. You know, like yeah, probably everybody did that, right? Yeah, everyone did. Um, well, it's interesting now too because like uh, one of my 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 best friend, um, his uh, oldest son is playing. He's hooping. He's eight now. And um, the way that like you learn how to play ball now is positionless. So yeah. it's interesting, you know, because I asked him at one time at one point about that. And he was just like, I don't there's no positions. Right. In terms of like one through five. So it's just more of like, are you here? Are you here? We're like, what's your role? Blah, blah, blah. So it's interesting how like the fundamentals and then how you kind of like um, are, 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 are even brought into and introduced to the sport now has uh, has evolved. You can't deny like the skill level is so much higher these days. It's required, man. Like it's crazy. every big man, you know, there's going to be a new set of it. Well, I guess Jokic is that like, whereas the back to the basket, big guy that just dominates because nobody knows how to play it. Yeah. But yeah, dude, like the fact that seven footers are like between the legs, dunks on people, you know, like just fucking wild shit. Like, whereas before it was like literally only the two, the one and the two were supposed to know how to dribble, you know, and pass that. Like if you're a three guy, you're, you know, you have a few dribbles. But, you know, like if a center would bring the ball up, it was like, oh, shit. You know, like Shaq's on all the highlight reels. Yep. What about you? What position? Everything. I was like one of the few people that had to fucking play everything. Oh, really? I think I was like the only person, dude, that had to play everything. So I, whenever I go in, I have to, I would check in and I'd ask coach, what position am I? I just, in truth, in my head, the version of you I have is like, you know, the, you know, I know you're not Filipino, but like the Filipino guy with handles in my yeah, head. PBA. I had jumper though. I had Jay all day. So motherfuckers like, that's the thing, like growing up too. Um, I, I like, I mean, I, I had a, I guess a, you can call it a growth spurt, I guess it wasn't really because I'm only fucking five, eight and like I grew hella. Right. But, Obviously. um, earlier on. Right. So, I mean, I was what five, six or so in seventh grade. Yeah. Seventh grade. And then eighth grade is around that same height, almost five, eight. Um, mm -hmm. so then ha being in that position, for my junior high team, our, my team was fucking stacked, dude. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we were good. Like, our starting lineup was like 5'8", 5'8", 5'11", 6'3", 6'3", in eighth grade, right? Yeah, in eighth grade. Yeah. So, but the thing was, like, I was athletic enough to kind of bang down down low because we weren't playing so many people that were, like, you know, 6'5", and, 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 and higher. So, it's not like I was with the trees. And then, mm -hmm. so, I was more accustomed to play. I started in seventh grade at like, 4, and then I kind of moved out to the wing, um, so I played like three, four, and then going into high school, it was more of like two, three, 
uh, sophomore year, I was one, two, three, which is terrible because it's like you never had me prepping to fucking play the one. Now you want me to fucking like be able to dribble with my left hand and call the plays and run the shop. It's like I was never that guy. Right. But mm. our, our centers were terrible. So I had to play big man because I yeah. would bang harder than them. I was more coordinated. They were, you know. Yeah, you know, back then it was like you're not even supposed to dribble, right? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in playoff games and stuff, I had to do that where they, all right, you're playing five. Yeah, <laughs> and it's 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 interesting because like on if if like you know if it was an ISO play where we're pulling a big man out, then it's fun because these guys aren't keeping up. But it's like if I'm down low, I ain't posting nobody, I ain't getting the ball down there. Like this is stupid, you know what I mean? But yeah, um, and then also because growing up on the east side, also of my town, um. You know, I was obviously a minority, you know, but coming in, like coming on, it's like everyone sizes you up. They're like, oh, this dude can't shoot. Awesome. Play off me. I don't care. So I'm just going to splash in your face anyways. You know? Yeah. Old school, too. I guess it's different up here. Right. But like when I was younger, one of my like the best player on my team was this Laos guy. Uh And everybody right off the bat would assume that, you know, they call him like the Chinese guy. Of course. And And the Chinese guy back in the day. It meant, um, you know, shoot. No, it meant the guy from Hong Kong. Okay. Right. So, like, those guys couldn't play back then. They just had Jordans, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It is what it is. But then after time, like, yeah. And it's like, yeah, like there was that that wave of like Filipino guys that could all just ball. Yeah. And break dance. (laughs) You know, so then they exactly. But see, like, those guys used to cherry pick and carry all day. These are the ones I grew up with. So yeah. I hated playing against them. I'm like, dude, you guys are just gonna cherry pick. Like, don't cherry pick, play D. Like, actually play some D, you know, yeah. and actually block out and do something and guard somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how, just how it was like growing up, like, you know, where where I was hooping. And then that was the thing too, was like when I finally understood how to change speeds, I was fast on the court. It was just like I couldn't, I wasn't proficient at changing speeds. They were when I was able to do that and read the players, the game slowed down. I was like, oh, this is fun. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I had a quick release too. So I can basically walk up and just, I'll walk up a pole and people are like, Oh shit, mm-hmm. he ain't going to do that again. And I'm going to do it again. Right. Nobody, nobody used to do that at all. Right. Mm-hmm. It's Steph Curry shit. Like where it's like one man break, you know, one on three. Oh, I should definitely shoot from half court. Yeah. But, <laughs> people are like, they ain't gonna do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like this motherfucker ain't going to shoot that. You know, yeah, wild. that's all of it these days. When I was coaching a few years ago, literally, they're all just launching from half. And that's tough, dude, because then it's kind of like yeah, they it's so hit hard. it though. That's the problem, right? That's such a challenge with the way the game's evolved now. Cause it's like when you pick up then you have to pick up this kid from half court. And it's like growing up, like you don't anticipate that, right? It's like, oh, this motherfucker make one or two, but he's not yeah. gonna be automatic. Oh no, he got range from there. That's yeah, a yeah. different game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like what do you yeah. the jelly stuff, you know? Man, I like this should look cool as fuck, right? But this is different. Trip. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's totally different. Anyways, man, we're here for marketing. So before we get into it, you have any um anything happen in the agency this week? Anything happen? Uh yeah. So nothing happened in the sense. Well, I mean, yeah, there's 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 interesting stuff happening right now. What I'm kind of seeing in the landscape is um I spoke the last time I spoke with Rob Bailey um with and Kristen, Rob had said the majority of the and I might have said this last week too, but I'll just repeat myself because I think there were some more ahas for me. Uh the majority of the um six, seven, eight figure high level agency income earners. Mm -hmm. Um, are running with a system and a SaaS type of a play to where they're not doing so much high ticket on the front end, but then it's more of like, say, a um, an offer stack that basically allows them to charge more monthly. So this is my point, right? So Mm -hmm. um, as I'm going through like um, the high level agency training with Cooch right now, there's nothing I haven't heard before, but then I'm I'm different, right? Yeah. Yeah. So right. So the three different things that he talks about is like. In the SaaS world, right, there's uh, three different, or in the agency world, there's three different places where you could be. You could be the tools provider, you could be the systems provider, or the agency provider. So Mm -hmm. in context, when you're thinking about that. um, Done with you, done for you. Well, it yes, it's it's some it's a little bit of the difference in this in the context of the way like it's the scalability of it as well, right? So right, like it is kind of like the do it yourself done with you done for you type of a play. Um, mm-hmm. But the aha that I got was last time I talked to Rob and when I was doing SWAS before these new Twilio um, requirements, carrier SMS mo- mobile carrier restrictions were starting to come down the pipe. You didn't have like any friction to be able to start and launch an SMS campaign and put money in your client's pocket quickly. 
So mm-hmm. that turned your, um, you could actually do somewhat of a high ticket front end and then drop the SaaS. But the challenge was I was never able to do that. This is what I mean, right? If I'm turning $2,500 a month for the first three months, and then I drop it to $500 a month, and then I'm kind of letting letting go of the reins, if you will, then where, like the, the perception of the transition, I, I, I didn't have a smooth transition to that. Meaning for the first three months where I was providing results for these clients, it was literally a white glove experience to where they never even logged into their high level. Their high level. They knew they had one. But they also knew that the only thing that they cared about was appointments that my team was booking on the calendar for them. So that's what that's what they that's what they were trained for. They were they were trained for results or uh, being results oriented, right? Yeah. So the problem was once it was kind of like, hey, we don't need you doing this anymore, right? Um, they didn't have the education to actually pull it off themselves. They don't have the conversation. They they don't have that. Um, but it's like. You go from, you know, so then, yeah, you, you hand them off and say, okay, here, here it is. But it's like, well, why am I even going to pay you $500 a month? It doesn't make any sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because they were never bought into the system in terms of what it could do. They still had their sent on, sent on the website. They weren't doing anything with inbound anyways. So it was kind of like they were never trained on, like, say, the new way versus the old way. It was like done for you, agency style business. And then it, I, we never trickled off. So then I was like, I understood the concept of like, hey, get your SWAS hooks in first. So then after the three months, you can basically go down to like, it was three pay up front and then go down to a monthly uh, service agreement, right? But what mm-hmm. I'm seeing, and then Rob echoed it was um, out the gate, it should be more of like, say a, for example, right? 497 a month, 697 a month or a thousand dollars a month. But then that's the system that they're buying into. And that then a la Mike Cooch is more like, they're buying in to have access to use your system. So it's not like you're doing any custom work for them. They're not, they're not licensing anything. But so long as they're paying, they have access to use the system for their business, right? Mm-hmm. And my whole point saying this is, I was like, how do I get from where I was when I was working your system, Rob, to how people are doing it now? Because I wasn't understanding the pricing structuring, right? Mm-hmm. So then now what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing is people instead of, so what we're basically going against is the people that are just selling high level as a SaaS. Here it is, $97 a month, do whatever you want with it, right? And you'll get all this other shit. Um, instead of that, we're selling a system, right. That is built on top of high level that utilizes high level and and everything, but then we're building campaigns, assets, templates, and everything in it for them to be able to utilize. And that's what we're charging a higher fee for. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm even saying all that, because I was like, how do I get a higher recurring one? How do I get consistent recurring revenue and higher than just basically doing like an affiliate playoff of high level. And I think that's where we're trending to. Hmm. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's kind of like I was kind of rambling yeah, 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 yeah. on that with you. No, no, no. A hundred percent. Because basically I, I've had the same struggle too, where it's just like, um, yeah. How do you build it out to where it is the actual system? How do you make it where it's sticky enough for to get people to come back? How do you make it where it's standalone though, where it's like, it's still on there. It's up to them to use it. And like, it's literally just making it software, right? Just like the same way you would get a three hundred dollar thing to be able to use the system, have access to everything. Yeah, and I think what Mark Mike talks about, and I'll start. I started listening to his, to to the training from the start yesterday, um, and actually go through it in sequence. Right, um, is the differentiation is really what's going to make it stand apart, stand 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 out from the crowd. Right. What is it so, that you have in it? Yeah. What else will we adding in it? So then, right now, I know that, and I don't also want to be the type um, that. Um, I don't want to be uh, the type that is uh, dialed into a niche because I don't know what the hell that niche is yet. In a, in a relevant point, I was talking to Glenn, who's my partner on a lot of projects. Uh-huh. Uh, basically, when I was explaining the the thing of like, you know, they say, you know, the riches are in the niches, bitches. Yeah. Uh, like that kind of stuff. And I was like, I don't know why it's always been so hard for me to do it. And then he just basically broke it down. I was like, yo, you as your personality wanting to help everybody, wanting to help a broader spectrum of people, you're not going to be able to do it. You're never going to niche down the same way that he can't, where it's just like, but getting towards that point of like you're niched into an actual product or an actual service, you know, it was kind of his point, like where I've tried it a bunch of times, right? And it never really felt right. And yeah, I was maybe in my head would say like, I'm just not focusing enough or I'm not, I'm not hammering it through. I'm not doing this. But at the same time, like, man, I've, 
I've definitely been focused, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like seven days a week, 10, 10 hours a day minimum, you know, just, just making that right. Yeah. Um, um, so what is your take on that? So like, tell me more about that. Like where you have you arrived to now, since you're talking to Glenn about that and what's your experience right now? You know, you can offer a service, you can offer a bunch of different components of it, but to, you know, to do the, I only deal with cash dentists in Alabama. Mm -hmm. like that's too niche for me. And it's the way of thinking, right? right? Right. Some people are very good at like narrowing in on one problem, figuring out how to solve that one problem, and then making extra assets on that one problem to make, you know, just super dialed in. Mm -hmm. But what excites me is the new problems, right? Like what excites me is, yeah, we could do it this way, but we can also do it that way. And then mm -hmm. this way. And they're all things that have benefits. They're all everything. And yeah, it, for example, it's a, it's harder for me to get a team to be able to do something repetitively and nail it, you know, because it's not one playbook. It's kind of five. It's, it's teaching concepts instead of point and click. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, like there's a certain part, I like that. You know what I mean? Like I, I do enjoy coming up with new things. Like like I don't like to be an ideas guy because an ideas guy lacks the execution. Right. But at the same time, an ideas, you know, like I like the, I, I, you know, <laughs> I got a lot of good ideas. You know, oh, no, no, that's, that's, that's a great, great. You bring up some great points because like, that's how I've been thinking about it as well. It's like what, when I had that conversation with Rob, I was like, I keep like, I sound like a broken record to you because I keep talking about how things were going great in the mortgage space until the market shifted. Right. And he goes, no, I understand. And for me, right, the aha from that was like, remove yourself from being that industry specific. You can be specific in the context of like, okay, what types of businesses are this? Your niche could be a type of business that takes different types of appointment, like, for example, phone appointments, right? Or in-person appointments that has a database that is somewhat high ticket. So I was like, oh, interesting. So if that's the case, then I can talk to him in that standpoint. But in my, in, but to your point too, I'm an ideas person and I'm terrible at being the finisher. And I also know that it's an actual thing, right? You're either the visionary or you're the, the, um, what is the, what oh, in, the integrator, right? right? So I understand that part as well. And now I'm like, okay. And I also know that from two multi seven figure business owners, they were like, your business should be boring. Making money should be boring. And since I am not in that say seven or multi seven figure business type of earning space yet, I am going to let them speak on from experience, right? I'm like, okay. But at the same time, to what you're, to your point, what I'm seeing that may be able to fit this, right? In the sense of like, I know we need to be disciplined in the bucket that we're playing in, but but what I'm seeing that may be able to facilitate both of those in terms of being systems oriented and disciplined on that type of like, say, quote unquote niche, as we we're talking about, and also being creative and allowing ourselves to solve problems is the two spaces of, is it a system and a, and, and a service that we're selling, right? We'll, we'll call it that whole SWAS play with high level and, and, and what we're building there. Or is it something that could be course related to where people are buying the information because it's a problem that we want to solve and it excites us and we're solving that and to where we're adding value to the marketplace and people can utilize that. And I looked at that as two different avenues to where we can still be creative, but then, but then be disciplined to where we're getting the monetization. Because what is the... Um, I guess what's the like uh, expectation of what a course is supposed to do for you, as opposed to in addition to um, like on the 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 SWAS side of the business, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really does come down to a lot of that, right? Like just picking the the thing. Like it's still niche down. You know, for example, the story brand framework. Not every business is the same. Not every. Uh, every person's journey is the same. Not everybody's issues are the same, but you can apply the same framework or the same, you know, SaaS system or whatever to, to basically help them solve very similar problems. And what they do with it is what they do with it. Uh, but at the same time, like if you're helping them by putting together a course that says, okay, this is the way to break down your landing pages. This is the way to actually use your messaging. This is how your messaging translates into your video. You know, it, there's some of it is like, you know, every pair of Jordans is made basically the same. Right. But if you lace them up versus I lace them up, a different thing happens. Right. Yeah. Right. It just is what it is. That's the fine line I'm trying to play right now off that line of thinking. It's kind of like, okay, um, if there's something, it's like the whole flywheel concept as well. You know, it's like, I know there's certain niches that are going to work really well. So like the way I'm kind of architect thinking about this in terms of visually like architecting this, right. It's like, okay, have a website 
a la story brand that tells a story of what I do. And then they can choose their journey, if you will, in terms of what um, what they may need help with. But then at least there's one place to cohesively that says, these are the things I can help with. I don't want to be a jack of all trades, but these are the core competencies I can help you in, right? How do you select your journey? Because more specifically, if there, I mean, it's more of a matter of time, I, I feel, right? Once like say a niche kind of doubles down and we're getting a lot of results, all we have, all we have to do as, a, as a, a marketer is then just get more niche specific with the landing page that we could throw up using the same type of framework Right. And then basically start to showcase these certain parts of the system to get more of those people because then there's going to be scalability. But until we land on that point, and I'm talking, I say we as in myself, right? Until I land on that specific, those specific industry types, I can still very like generally talk about this in that sense to say, for a restaurant, this is what we'd be doing. This, these are the things that you're going to need for a whatever type of business. These are the things that you're going to need. But then if we can build into the flywheel, then that business, the next person that comes along is going to benefit even more from what's already been built, you know? Mm hmm. Absolutely. Dude, and I guess with that, man, like uh, that was our cold open. Let's get into it right now. That's episode number eight, because I feel like it takes us to exactly where we want to go. Yeah. I'll leave Thank this you. right in the pod because you know what? That was that was pretty useful for me, too. Um, but on episode number eight, what we want to do is really get into the story brand framework. Uh, this is something that you put me on to a while ago. I've seen it in a bunch of different landing pages. Uh, but I know you're even kind of more into it than I am. Um, kind of. A little bit farther down the path anyways, right? I've just heard it more, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it's literally as old as time, right? Like, this is what it is. People actually, um, you know, we always talk about no like trust, no like trust, no like trust. And one of the things that gets people into that no like trust is like actually caring what you have to say. Um, but to take it a step further is like, they don't necessarily want to know what I have to say. They yeah. want to know how I can help them. And if I've been able to do it before, and if, if my experience is going to kind of resonate with them on their own personal journey, you know, on their own hero's journey. Um, so kind of what I'd like to start off with is like, with your understanding of it, um, basically, uh, yeah, so essentially, like, why are stories so powerful in, in marketing? I mean, I think it's interesting, right? And I'm going to butcher this because I'm not like a, um, it's just the way I retain information. I don't, I, I usually don't retain the origin of it. I usually figure out what the purpose is, and then I latch on to that. But mm -hmm. really what it comes back down to for me is like understanding, right? And this is in my own words, understanding that throughout the history of man, right? The way that tradition and things have been passed on is through story. Mm -hmm. We understand this from a very young age um, when we're growing up because that's how we were uh, taught things as well, right? Whether it was nursery rhymes or bedtime stories or things of that nature, um, before the masses were literate and we were able to even document these things, how were traditions told and passed down? It was through story. It was through fable. And oftentimes it was through a way in which it was kind of like a rhyme or a poem or, or something very short, right? So mm -hmm. this is something that's been classic. But then also the other thing too is like even say um, high school English, right? Being introduced to Joseph Campbell and the different like say uh, writing styles and storytelling styles. One of the things that stood out to me was once you understand, say, the hero's journey and how that story is basically set up and the components of it, you can never unsee it to the point of where almost every story that utilizes that same type of framework, uh, you could kind of see where the spoilers are going to come. Right. If every movie is the same movie. Every story is the same story. Right, right, right. And uh, I think maybe because I understood that there was a cheat code there, maybe my brain was like, don't remember that cheat code word for word or frame for frame, frame by frame, mainly because you're going to spoil it for yourself. But, you know, as it kind of consistently comes up, we know that it's a truth. It's a foundational principle. And, you know, when I recently when I first discovered Donald Miller and the story brand, that's really where it came from. All right. It wasn't something that he basically made up, but then he utilized the same framework in uh how to tell that story in a a company's brand, if you will. Hence, maybe that's where the origin of the story brand came from in terms of the name of his business. I'm not sure, right? But I was exposed to it years ago. And then looking at it, I feel as though, wow, if we're using something that's been tried and true throughout the history of mankind, right? And we're mapping it to marketing, right? Then you would think that because it is a foundational principle, it, it, it may work. And, you know, 
needless to say, it absolutely is working, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and I think one of the interesting parts of it is that when you think about a company using the story brand and how a story works, the, the real essential part of it for me is that the, you know, they say everybody is the hero in their own story. Everybody's mm -hmm. a main character in their own story. But when you're using it for marketing, your company isn't the hero, right? The character, the main character, the Luke Skywalker is the person that's reading your content, right? So you have to kind of uh, identify who they are by kind of, you know, basically, you know, it's going to be them. You call out their problems as things that really actually apply to them. And then you show up as your Obi-Wan Kenobi, essentially, you know, and what you're saying, if you think about not the scar Star Wars scar Star Wars geek out here, but like Obi Wan shows up and he's like a seasoned veteran. I've been here before. I know how to do this. I have the tools that will help you get this transformation that you're looking for. And good marketing is about transformation, right? Right. Marketing is about it's literally solving a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't buying the products that we sell, and, and I feel like when I'm doing it myself, and I've been super super uh guilty of this over the years i'm just presenting the product you know buy this because it does this but like if people are going to have like a real affinity to your brand it's because you solve a problem for them consistently you know like if you have a headache what do you do but i have a headache what should i do yeah you should take some medicine what kind of medicine uh tylenol advil ibuprofen Right. Because they branded it in that they're the solution to that problem. Exactly. Right. Right? You know, if my stomach hurts, Pepto Bismol. If, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know, I've, <laughs> if I have a wart on my foot, Dr. Scholes, you know, like there's just, there's good things. And it's not necessarily that I remember the product. In reality, what it is, is I remember the solution to the problem. Right. And I think that's, that's kind of a really cool part of the story brand. You know, after the guide shows up, then they, you know, they get together. They make up a plan, you know, like they do the training to become the Jedi. Um, you know, I guess with the story brand, they do get into like calls to action and stuff like that. We don't have that in Star Wars. There isn't any like, hey, come join the rebellion. You know, that was before they had interactive 3D movies or whatever. Yeah. But it, it just, it is what it is. And then there's the option of success and failure. Right. And, and both of those kind of go towards it. So I've really been focusing on it this week as I'm trying to think about the journey that that the actual customers are on mm -hmm. like you know a lot of times with with subpar marketing or just like say traditional marketing it can get really really wordy mm -hmm. you know what I mean? like the problem can be like just you're not defining it easy enough you're using really complicated language whereas just identifying the problem calling out who has this problem and then offering the guidance and the expertise i think it is is actually like life-changing as a guy who owns an agency yeah life-changing 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 if it's something that's used in so many different industries successfully over the years right like you know a la hollywood right specifically copywriting in terms of how uh words can be used in a series of words can be used to persuade you to do something when i first got exposed to copywriting i did i thought it was just that little c in a circle mm -hmm. granted this was over you know like probably over two decades ago man i'm dating myself over two decades ago, right? But in being able to understand how you can go from like, you know, in the digital age, a blank screen to pixels onto a screen, you reading something or you reading and watching and listening to something. And then ba basically from that messaging, you're taking out your credit card and then you're, it's taking your money. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing to understand that there's a framework and there's a process to it. And once we understand that and we understand, you know, how the world actually operates at a sixth grade reading, writing and speaking level, it should challenge the way that we are, we we look at communicating with our customers and, and clients, right? Do you think there's any brands, like one, absolutely. I think that's a great point of like simplified language all the time. It's easy as a marketer, as an author, as something like that, it's super easy to explain a difficult concept using difficult words. Right. Well, what you're doing is you're alienating most of your audience and, and there's no way to demonstrate your understanding of something or your ability to solve a problem as like explaining it at a sixth grade level, right? It's like, everybody should be able to explain this. If I say it to my kids, they should say, 
Oh yeah. What does daddy do? Makes websites, make videos. That's Why? right. So people buy stuff, you know, like it is what it is. Right. <laughs> um, now I know it's easy to say almost any industry would kind of benefit from using the story brand benefit, sorry, story brand framework, but is there any industries that you can think of that are just like a natural kind of, you know, hand in glove kind of fit where it's, it's just really easy. I think back to your point, it could be any, but more specifically, if you think about who your actual ideal customer is, if your ideal customer is someone that is of the masses and you're not dealing in a climate to where you're dealing from, you know, in the same sphere of like highly educated, highly um, specific, you know, um, uh, professional field to where you can speak at a very elevated vocabulary level, um, you're more than likely going to fit into the bucket that uh, can benefit from utilizing the the story brand framework, right? And and let me kind of preface this too, like as we're kind of like championing the the framework, this wasn't developed by that company, right? This was something that that company basically had put together and showcased to say, hey, these these building blocks that have worked over time and in different industries are working here now. You can utilize this in your marketing, and it applies to these types of businesses, meaning every type of business where you're actually dealing with a consumer that probably isn't as educated um, and experienced about the product or the service that you sell as, as, as they are, right? So mm -hmm. in, in that context, I would say, if you're not dealing with the same type of person, right, that's, mm -hmm. that's specific in the field, more than likely uh, their framework's gonna work for you and your business. Yeah, that's a great point. I actually sent, uh, sorry, I actually had a client, mm -hmm. um, what they always, what they make is lasers that go inside of volcanoes and inside of spaceships. Right. And when they gave me their product write ups and all this kind of stuff, I was like, well, we can't use this. Nobody can understand that. And they're like, no. For us, when people call me, they're saying, you know, how many gigahertz in the flex capacitor? If I want, you know, what happens if I go past 88? You know, where it's just things that to me, a guy who does not have NASA level intelligence, it just does not make sense to me. Right. Right. Where for them, because everybody literally speaks their language, their, their language of, science it's just they you know they don't need the story brand of who's going to need the vacuum inside the volcano you know every it's like you need this because you're looking you know you're a phd student that needs this for your project you don't have that question um but if you're in another space uh especially like kind of personal branding spaces i think they're really good if you you know obviously anything that's that's service based with with one person i feel like it's almost really really easy to use you know if you are a real estate agent if you are you know a coach if you're kind of anything like that it's very easy to present it uh on a personal level so it's really really appealing you know it's like and to me to go back to star wars it's why obi-wan kenobi is an appealing guide on the journey as opposed to the jedi order you know, mm -hmm. it becomes less personable. But then, you know, in time, once you get in, oh, it turns out you do get trained by everybody else that's along. You know, it, it's all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of a brief overview of kind of like who would use it and uh, certain cases. Um, but can we dive into what the actual story brand framework is a little more and just kind of go into the sections and, and, and see if we can... Uh, dig for some gold in there yeah i mean i guess i'll i'll take a crack at explaining what it is right the story brand framework is um, a seven part framework that takes um a brand a company's brand script mm -hmm. right mapped out um and it's an exercise that you would do first in the mm -hmm. sense of like identifying who is the hero in the, the the journey of your in terms of like identifying um, what does your ideal client or customer, which is the hero of their journey, right? What do they want, right? So identify who the character is, right? Who is the hero? If you are the guide, what problems does your customer, the hero in the story, right, um, have, right? And oftentimes when you think about problems, you, you want to identify, right, the external problems that are, that, that are apparent, right? The, the symptoms, not the cause, right? And also the internal ones. If that problem, right, doesn't get um solved what are they experiencing pain frustration anxiety worry what are those things right and then also uh philosophically right is it a way of thinking is it a mindset thing right what are they going through um and then 
when you appear as the guide, so I'm kind of just going through the the seven step process, right? Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I I really like that, but maybe just to add even an extra level of context, let's let's kind of build something out with an example. Yeah, um, so let me go through the seven parts first, and then let's go through an example. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So within your uh, brand script, or if you go to uh, mystorybrand.com, it's free, right? Mm -hmm. So it's almost sounds like an, it's an infomercial for the company, but man, the that foundational framework can be used regardless if you're a marketing agency or a consultant like Kevin and myself or not, right? Just for your own company itself. So check that out, right? So here are the seven parts. I'll read them to you, right? So the very first part of that is going to be a character, which is going to be your customer, okay? Which is the hero in the journey. Uh, part two is has a problem. What are their problems, right? And there's subsections to that as well. Um, it meets a guide, which is you or your company, okay? Um, who gives them a plan? What is your solution to their problem or solutions to their problem, right? Uh, and and how do how do you go about solving their problem? So in other words, how do they go about reaching out to you to help guide them to solve their problem? Right. Uh, the call to action is what do they need to do first? What is that first thing they need to do? Call, visit, schedule, book book an appointment. You know, take this quiz, whatever that is. Right. Um, the end of the success. So the before after state. Right. After you solve the problem, what? How do they feel? What does that look like? What is the benefit, not the feature, but the benefit of um, of, of you working with you. Um, and then, uh, that helps them to avoid failure, right? So what are the things that, that, that could happen if they don't work with you? If they continue with doing what they're doing right now, if they keep suffering through the problem, what are those things? And then the last part is, um, the character transformation from, which is the before state to the after state. So if you look at these seven components, right. And you basically fill these parts of the components out, this comprises of what the store brand calls your brand script. So within this brand script are copy chunks that you can utilize now to then craft different assets for your company, right? Your website wireframe that you can that you can hand off to your uh, your designer to be able to kind of make look pretty. Your email templates, your lead magnet, those things. Okay. Uh, what do you mean by copy chunks that you can use in different places? Yeah. So if if you guys recall the uh, website um, uh, podcast episode that we went through, right? Kevin is the professional and the pro at creating uh, and developing websites, right? So what I mean by copy chunks is if you think about, say, a story and you utilize this concept of having a brand script for your story, each part or each section is a different uh, piece of um, or cluster of content that focuses on one certain aspect of your company, Okay. So if you think about that, look, look at, visualize that as different, say, building blocks or Legos for anything that you're doing with your messaging. Okay. So you can move them around if you needed to have, say, different messaging for different, say, assets that you wanted. Okay. Um, and that's how I kind of would look at it in terms of copy chunks. You're not always starting from scratch. So if you ever need to pull, I just let me finish with this part, right? It's like, if you ever needed to kind of um, look at, say, if my, like, what are the different things that like pains that my um, ideal customer are experiencing now? That's where you start from. Go into that part. Has a problem. What are the problems? Right. And then kind of go deeper into that part. And then like in more traditional website language, that's basically the features and benefits, right? Like, cause yeah. you're providing the solutions right now, or that's the problem, I guess, essentially calling the person out. That's who the character would be. Uh, your, our story or about us is basically how you introduce yourself as the guide. The guide, exactly right. So it's still the same, in essence, it's still the same framework that we've been using, but it's a different spin on it because like, you know, if you think about really compelling speakers, what's great about them is when you talk to them, they make you feel like you're the most important person there. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've heard that from uh, like a bunch of people and they say, talk about Obama or uh, Brad Pitt, you know, like the, the story is always the same where it's like, he's talking to me, like he's excited to talk to me. Meanwhile, this was like the most powerful man in the world, you know, but he's just really good on a personal level, makes them feel like a star. And then whatever the, you know, then he turns around and asks them for, you know, whatever, $50,000 of campaign. Or yeah. What's that saying? Like in order to be interesting, be interested. Oh, that's a good saying. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's just, you have to be, yeah, you actually have to care about the other person. It's that same thing. If you're always asking, if you're always making an offer, people don't care. If, I, if every time we got on this call, I was sitting here, oh, Tom, we're, you know, if, if you were constantly telling me how awesome you are, that would get old very quickly. You, you know what I mean? Because like, I'm not that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, but people don't like talking to somebody who's like super conceited. And a lot of time yeah. websites or sales copies or, or just marketing materials in general, it's like, we do this, we have this, we've done this. Right. 
right? Yeah. And after a while, what you really should be saying, what the story brand framework really lets you do is say, we can help you with this. Right. So if you think about it in the way that you've educated me on how you have your website pages flow is by the end of the uh, someone scrolling down or reading or skimming, right? In this, in this day and age, a page, you want those people to be bought in multiple times that you understand their problem and that you can help solve their problem, right? Mm -hmm. That is that conversation that you're having. And it's a great point that you, that you make too, right? It's like, in order to be interesting, be interested. So if you're interested in their problems, what are you doing? You're asking them questions. Mm -hmm. You're acknowledging, I've been there, I understand. And right, when I've had those problems, this is how we solved it, right? And that actually really relates back to like, say onboarding calls, sales calls and all that stuff. Like, you know, in essence for you to do a really good job on your sales calls, they say that you should be talking, you know, no more than 30% of the time, mm -hmm. right? So. Your website is just an extension of that. Your marketing is just an extension of that where, you know, it should still be about that person where as they're reading it in their head, you know, it's that you're connecting with where I already am, you know, like you're connecting yeah. with my thoughts and I'm actually the star of your website, right? And it's, it's a great way to put it, right? In addition to being the guide in all the story brand, right? Being the guide in someone else's journey, your customer's journey. Think about what their favorite radio station is. Mm -hmm. W I I F M, right? What's in it for me? <laughs> so, if you're thinking about from that standpoint, in order for me, like, in, so if you think about everything we're talking about, it's interesting because it all stems from the same foundation. And if that foundation that we're talking about is utilizing this framework, right, is to basically be able to say, "Hey, I'm I'm here to help you." It's you're the star of the show. You're the star of your journey. Then think about that, right? If I'm talking, I should be asking a question and listening more, right? A la sales. Right. And everything else should be a, a, a geared around. How do I help you solve your problem? Are you experiencing any of this, this pain so I can help you? With that, right. I was speaking to a client that, that we just launched his website the other day. Like it, it launched on Saturday. But right before this, I was talking to him and he said, man, when I got off my first phone call with you, I was so happy because you were so confident. You knew what you were talking about. You broke it down in just plain English. And I was convinced that you would help me do it. Hmm. In say, I was so, I was so impressed by how cool you are. You know, I was so impressed at like all of the stuff you said. No, he said, after talking to you, I knew that you could help me get there, mm. which is kind of interesting. Cause like, obviously my, my mind traditionally, every time I've read this, I'm, I'm really only thinking about how the story brand works in written form, but it's also a hundred percent in, in your conversations uh, in your interview styles, in oh, in this podcast style, really, right? Like where, what people should be getting out of it is like, will this help me get to the next level? And kind of with that in mind, um, I've found a couple really good podcasts on it. It's like, you know, there's podcasts that are literally called the story brand framework. I, I've been plowing through those. Do That's you awesome. have any other resources that are are really good for people? Yeah, you know, honestly, I would say take it to Google. You're going to find and gravitate to different story brand guides that are out there and different companies that utilize a framework to do things. And for me, it's the repetition that um, allows me to, like like with any skill set, right? It's the reps that you put in that, mm -hmm. that'll get you more honed in on it. I've had the privilege of working with a, a close friend uh, and business owner that was a certified uh, story brand guide. So mm -hmm. um, in a previous company, um, we worked with him to craft our uh, website messaging. Right. So it was interesting because I went through and I invested in the course years ago, understood it conceptually, but then I was, I was putting it into practice. The challenge is I'm too close to the problem. I'm trying to write this for myself and my own company. And it's just like, I need an external person to help with this. So, and it just so happened that one of our friends that we used to mastermind with became a, a story brand guide. So we were like, Hey, let me hop on a call with you and just have you guide us. You'll be the guide in our hero's journey. Cause we can't articulate for whatever reason. Right. Yeah. I was laughing because at the end of that podcast, like 20 minutes ago, I'm coming around a corner on my bike laughing because I'm like, at the end of every episode, they pitch if you want to be a story brand, a certified story brand framework person, right? Take our uh -huh. course. Uh -huh. And I'm like, these guys must suck at it because Tom's super into it and he's never bought the course. But you did buy the course. I bought the I bought the info product course, yeah. not the guide, not the certification. I never went through the yeah. certification of it, right? 
And it was just, you know, that's, it kind of gets back to that same thing of just like, it's time and place. Yeah. It's reps too. I mean, I understand it. I see the value in it. And I also know that um, being able to experience on, on both sides in the sense of taking the course, right. Listening to it in so many different ways, but also seeing it and practicing it out in the field. And then also being like, say a client of a certified guide, it helped because of the way you pull things. And what makes it even better now and it gives me more confidence is the fact that we can use AI hmm. because now I can leverage what I understand and what I think I know, but then I can leverage, say, a different type of, uh, you know, intelligence database that can give me other ways of, say, articulating the, the framework, which drives it home even better, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, as we said many times, it's artificially intelligent, but it's an amazing tool. Um, what I've been, I've been using it literally yesterday, I guess, when I was writing out a, a website where did it in the story brand framework mm -hmm. somewhat, uh, just because I feel like that's a really good way to personalize it. Yeah. Uh, but that combined with like, you know, in the tone of, you know, somebody that you like, it just, it gives you a really, really good first draft that you can then, you know, you still always have to edit it because you don't want to mm -hmm. just use other stuff. Right. But it, it really does help you connect with like the actual pain points, what somebody's actually thinking. And that's really what it is. That's going to help somebody, you know, that's going to make somebody trust you enough to purchase. Yeah. Right? Agreed. This is how I can solve your problem. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Um, yeah. I, I'm honestly, I think I'm going to be studying this all weekend because of just how interesting it is to me. And I know that's a little bit, maybe just like talk and shop kind of stuff. But, you know, every once in a while you get onto something that just is like, it makes you obsess over it. You know what I mean? I was actually surprised uh, that you weren't as familiar with the framework just because of how good you are um, at uh, creating websites. Because I understand that by doing them for so long and not being like, say, a pro at it, that there's so many nuances to it. Before I was exposed to that and even having a framework for it, I was trying to fit copy chunks inside of a a website UI that was already laid out for me. And I was like, that wasn't working because if you have a different one that a customer is saying, oh, I like the way this one looks better. I didn't know how to map out there at the time. Didn't have a brand script. I didn't, but see, right, like I didn't have a brand script to then be able to map to a website layout that someone liked, right? Mm -hmm. And that was before I understood that copy is what drives design in most cases. And that's why I'm excited to even to see how you're going to be able to level up your design process by incorporating this into your already working uh, uh, website um, build type of uh, um, service, you know? Yeah, to be honest with you, like over the years, we've done a lot of service-based stuff, right? So with service-based stuff, uh, especially when it's like SEO oriented, what you're saying is like, hey, are you looking for a window repair in Richmond Hill? And then you kind of, you take that like, if somebody has a broken window, you don't need the story brain framework because it's just like, it's like a product solution generally right it's it applies more when somebody has a lot of different options and they need a re and they're looking to make a connection essentially right like this is one of those things that creates brand ambassadors i believe you know like yeah as opposed to you know you want me to generate leads for your local business this is the easiest way to do it quickly and effectively but even still to go back and do some of those i would you know i would definitely change some of the write-ups because it's definitely we do this we're good at that we do whatever they work essentially those websites are designed to generate leads and they do generate leads but do they generate people who are trumpeting the brand and will for years to come that it really comes down to the experience they had with the service right yeah and i think circling back to that as well right the intention of say a landing page as we've talked about in a previous episode Right, that copy, that design, that function of that asset, if you will, is to have them take an action. Right, there's only two things you can do: you can either click off the site and not do anything, or you're going to take the action there because the pain that you have is aligned with the, the 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 solution that we have to alleviate you of that pain. Right, but as you're talking about it, every business in 2023 should right have a website. Now, are you properly and efficiently utilizing that as an asset for your company is what we're talking about. So if you already have something in place, right? But then now if you're layering on top the story brand framework, this should enhance that user experience already. And it should promote more brand, like more of a brand ambassador type of a, a play with the copy that you have, right? 
Well, the two different styles too, they also address different things, right? It's, right. it's, you know, it's like a traffic and conversion, right? Like if the biggest problem that your electrical company has is like not enough people find our website, you know, I'd go heavy with SEO where we're talking about the specific things that somebody does. You don't have to lay it out. You know, you, you can make them like you a little bit more by talking about say the pain points and like really, you know, digging deep when you're talking about like, you know, maybe if you're telling the story of how they try to do their own pot lights and, you know, like you don't have to worry if your shoddy DIY electrical is going to catch fire when, when family's over for Christmas or, you know, you can, you could play it out that way, but at the same time, they have the problem of traffic. And if you want to solve traffic first and foremost, you know, that's a SEO with an offer. But if the issue is like, Hey, we get a ton of people like, you know, I, I'm dwelling on this one website a hundred percent that gets thousands of website views every month, but the conversion rate is like maybe 5%. Like, could the story brand take that to 10, 12 by making the actual end user more of the, the story? I absolutely believe so. You know, I'm, I'm in my head already mapping it out where, you know, we're going to split test the two versions against each other, uh, which actually conveniently takes me to the next point. You know, like if, somebody wants to implement the story brand framework in their business um what is the first step that they should take understand it right first understand it like we we're saying there's so many different resources and if you are a visual and auditory person i suggest going to youtube right if you're uh, more of a, a reader type then just go onto that website right understand it first and then go through it and build out your own brand script right so there's, again, there's so much out there that you could Google. I've learned so much by Googling because once you understand the building blocks of it, then you're going to want to do it yourself, right? So take, and again, there's three different buckets, right? The, the DIYers, the, the do-it-yourself people, the done uh, with you people, and the done for you people, right? So within that, there's a whole... There's a whole business around um, story, the brand certified guides helping you to do this, right? And there's also free resources as well. Whatever to whatever bucket you choose or journey you choose to go on to, understand it first and then go ahead. And then the very first step is to fill out your brand script. Understand mm -hmm. it, fill out your brand script because that's the crux of everything else and all the other assets that uh, can be created from there. And for me, what I did was um, I leveraged Chat GPT and I said, act as a story brand certified guide. And what can you, what can you, uh, what kind of assets can you create for me? And I'll say, great, as a story brand certified guide, these are the assets I can create for you. Awesome. Um, what do you need from me in order to create those assets? And I'll say, great. Uh, these are the questions I need you to answer. So I went ahead and did that. That's great. That's great. I am definitely stealing that. <laughs> <laughs> Within the next 24 hours, I'm absolutely stealing that. Yeah. You mentioned something too about like the visuals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with story brand, a lot of times I'm thinking, you know, like you're painting this picture of whatever. How does the type of visuals or, or even video that you would use on a site or landing page, how would that change? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, if you think about it, one from just the wireframe perspective, and a wireframe is just a layout of a website, right? Mm -hmm. What If you looked at any, and there's free resources, again, please just use Google to your advantage, right? Use it as a resource. Uh, story brand wireframe, right? There's a whole bunch of companies that showcase that. So in, in the different ways that you can say aesthetically design it, the actual say copy chunks from your brand script are going to be laid out very in very similar fashion. Okay. So what they're going to do is they're going to say, here's in this section, you're going to put this part of your brand script. In this section, you're going to put this part. In this section, you're going to put this part. And then once you understand kind of how that roadmap looks, it's almost like you're going on a treasure hunt because then you can look at, say, all the different story brand websites that are out there in the wild. And I almost am positive that you are going to land on um, a website that is in your field. Look at how it's laid out and you're going to see these nuances. You're going to be like, oh, my goodness, it's going to be literally be that reticular activating system that's going to go off in, in your brain. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like. That red Ferrari that you've always wanted, you're never you're never going to be able to unsee it now once you understand that process, mm -hmm. right? Visually speaking, graphically speaking, you're going to always want to uh, speak to the emotion in it. So in the header, you're going you're going to want to showcase that imagery should be the after state that your ideal customer wants. So if you think about it from that standpoint too, the header of a website is before is everything above the fold. The fold is before you start scrolling. Okay, whether that's on the desktop or on mobile. 
So if you think about it from that standpoint, that real estate that's there within a three second, say, test, if you're looking at your website or you're looking at anyone else's website, you're going to want to within three seconds, know what they do and how they do it right in that snapshot. So what's going to be conveyed there is going to be that image of the after state. What does your ideal customer want and how can how can they get started working with you? Those three things, right? I am 1000% going to turn around and say that exact same thing to my team. The hero image is the transformation. Yeah. It's, it's after the transformation. It's the outcome. That's what it is. And then the wording just matches it. Well put. Well put, man. I, like, Well, bro, with so your S... Confident. And here's the other thing too, right? It's like, it's nothing that like maybe new, but this is a fact that we're having this dialogue, right? And we're hoping that the intention of having this podcast is to showcase and to help other people that are that are consuming the content, right? Mm-hmm. The other thing that's really cool on your end is that since you've been doing this for so long, on-page SEO, right? Think about that. What's the after state? What is that keyword phrase that people are looking for? Mm-hmm. Window repair city, mm-hmm. right? Boom. Service plus city. Mm-hmm. That could work, right? Yeah. And then just you show them the outcome of like whatever. And then right. as you get down in there, you do all the stuff, the imagery that's going to actually correspond to the problem. The, you know, this is a bird going through your window. And then here's the guy with the truck uh, from anything glass. We did their website. He's my boy. Check it out. <laughs> um, exactly. Anyways, exactly. He's showing up with the truck and the planes of glass. And this is what it is. And then just basically taking them through. So you're showing them the process, the the why, the and you know all that other kind of stuff. I like that because it, it does keep it very customer centric, and it is definitely something that people are going to relate to more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you've been putting this in for your business. I'm trying on mine. Can you think of any issues that like a typical business would have trying to trying to switch over their marketing and their messaging? I think. A challenge that you're going to come up with is being too close to the problem, right? There was a saying from one of my coaches that uh, it's hard to read uh, the label when you're sitting inside of the bottle, right? So that's why I hired and worked with a story brand certified guide because I was too close to the problem, right? Mm -hmm. The way in which you as the superhero, as the guide, right? Sees things, you're the expert in your space. You are the expert in your business. So the challenge with that is you know so much more than the average person does that you're going to articulate things to a, in, in a way to where it's common sense to you. But to the average human that, that communicates at a sixth grade level, they're not going to understand it. Mm-hmm. So how do you then, quote unquote, dumb it down, right? How do you like make it more straightforward, right? So then the, the masses can understand you. When you're speaking to someone in that sense, I would challenge you to say, well, you know, Kevin, you and I are blessed to have young kids at home so because we, so so that test always comes up. We're always having to rephrase things and speak to someone that's younger to communicate that way. That's effective communication, right? So I think that's the biggest challenge, right? Is going through this and then saying, how does my average customer communicate? How do I communicate with that person? So they understand what I'm saying is going to be the hardest part. Yeah, well, like one of the one of the roadmaps or sorry, roadblocks that I've had is let's say to look at a digital marketing company, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know who the hero is. The hero is the business owner or like basically, yeah, the business owner who's going to be reaching out to us, right? Now, their problem that we speak to, it's very easy for us to list 10 problems that they have. Oh, you don't have enough time. You don't have this. You're not making enough money because you don't have systems. Oh, you don't, you can't make good ads that are attracted to people. Oh, you get leads, but they don't convert. But in reality, when somebody is looking at your content, you know, generally they're going to buy off you because you talk about one problem. And the biggest problem that that I've experienced when just kind of going through the, the theory is how do you pick that one problem? Like, how do you know? Why is it that people actually purchase? They want that one problem solved? Yeah. And how do you pick the one problem, right? We, we solved... Dozens of problems. Literally, we solve dozens of problems for people, right? You have that decade of knowledge, decade plus of knowledge. You know how to solve tons of things. But generally, if somebody is going to purchase off you, they're purchasing for, you know, basically one reason, right? So even though you can you can help them in 20 ways, yeah. how do you decide which one you should narrow in on in your brand script? Yeah, I think that's a great uh, question. I mean, one way to facilitate that is, I mean, and we're talking more specifically about a digital marketing, say, agency 
or marketing or consultant out there, right? So I would say for those of you that are in, in, in our world in that sense, pick that one thing that you champion, that one superpower that you, you currently have and how you can solve them, solve that, right? Because if you're, if you're, if you're not bundling and productizing your services, then think about it from the standpoint, okay, what's that one thing that I know that I can do and that can scale where I do really extremely well? What's the problem? What are the typical problems that say my client has around that? Take your brand script and go through that with every service that you have. Create a brand script, if you will, for every service that you have. You want to look at it from that standpoint, right? The way in which I personally answer that right now is systems, mm -hmm. right? We're switching over to more of a systems oriented type of a process, meaning, okay, if these are the different pain points that you have, do you have these systems installed? If you don't, then how are you leveraging that? How are you solving the problem if you don't have this stuff in place? Right. We may not be able to fill in all the gaps or then basically shore up all of the all of the holes. Right. But we're going to be able to do a heck of a lot, a heck of a better job with installing this system as opposed to you having to learn it and then do it or you having to hire someone else to then do that for you specifically. Right. Well, yeah. And, and I'm, my mind just goes to this. Right. Like if, if what my agency is best at is basically, um, you know, if we're marketing, it's lead gen. If we're making websites, it's basically making websites that convert. Mm -hmm. I want a website that converts. What I'm really saying is I want more customers. And if I want more customers, I want more money. Right? So yep. problem would then essentially be I don't have enough money, which means I don't have enough time. I don't have enough blah, 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 blah. Right? Is that how you would recommend I work that backwards, you know, to try to kind of narrow in on what? I mean, it'd be, it's, it's, I think a little bit more nuanced than that only because I don't know in terms of the prospect, that business owner, where yeah. they are. are. Are they the, I don't have the money or I have the money. I don't have the money or the time, or is it one of the other, the other two buckets, right? I don't have money. I don't have time. I don't have money, but I do have time. I have, or I don't have time, but I have the money. Hmm. Because those are going to be different. And then for, for you, right, in terms of me in solution mode, what are the different ways in which they, you can serve that person, right, that business owner, if they had one or the other? Is it a course? Is it, say, a system that you can install, right, where they would put in certain inputs, but then they're running your system in your playbook? Or is it a custom job where you're doing stuff for them and it's taking time away, but it's more high touch to where it's do it yourself, done for you, or done with you, or done for you? Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's still, yeah, just how to narrow it down by what, what it is we're actually serving them. And how you're serving them. It could be the same solution, but in just the way in which they get that uh, solution. Yeah, you're solving the same problem. You're right. Solving the same problem. It's just how. Yeah. And then it's also what, it, and that how is the plan, right? That's the next step in the story brand framework. Huh. Take the course, join our group coaching, sign up one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Here are my here are my free resources, right? Watch all of our content, consume our stuff, download our white papers, right? Or sign up for our course where it's guided for you. So it's at your own pace, right? But it's evergreen. So it's at your own pace. You can you choose to run with it as, as quickly or take as, as much time as you need. Go group coaching one to many to where you're in it with a certain amount of other people that may be on the same journey as you or, or high level one to one, high touch, right? Dedicated custom, custom team working for you, right? Yeah, that's... That makes sense. And then kind of on top of that, you know, one of the steps of the story brand framework is calls to action, right? Having them in uh, basically around any point where you're talking about the pain, you're offering yes. a solution. So when, when we're crafting our CTAs within the story brand, essentially what we're saying is like a call to action that, that matches the problem. My problem is a broken window, get your window fixed today you know, stop that leaking, whatever, like the, the call to action almost is the solution to the problem kind of a la old school, uh, Russell Brunson stuff. Yeah. You know? I mean, absolutely. And you can even be more direct than that, right. In the sense of how, what's the very first step of the plan, right? How do they, like, how do they specifically start to work with you or start that process? Right. So for us as consultants and agency owners, oftentimes, Unless it's just like a tool base or a product based type of solution that they can buy off the shelf, and they don't need to talk to someone. It's more con consultative, right? So if it's consultative, then how are you incorporating? How are you basically taking them down that journey? Is it a complimentary phone call or consultation? 
It could be paid. It could be free, whatever it is, right? Is it a phone call? Is it an assessment, right? Is it um, whatever it is, right? So it could be, you know, book your call, right? It could also be that it could be that or take the quiz, right? It could be that it could be that um, direct as well. Okay, so we've basically identified that the character is the business owner. The problem is generally like they need more clients. That's why people hire marketing agencies, right? They need more business. Uh, then we present ourselves as the guide. As the guide, we can basically get into it. And we that's where we can say, hey, listen, we understand your pains. We know this. We used to be in your spot. We've helped lots of people like you. You know, in, in essence, that's when you can kind of throw in the the social proof, right? This is where I can put logos of other companies in your industries. This is where I can also kind of get into, um, you know, stats, that kind of thing, um, just as a way of backing up the guide. Then we kind of present the plan, which would be the system, as you kind of outlined. Uh, we have a call to action, which is going to basically answer that problem or let somebody know how they can get started with that plan. Right. Uh, the next step is basically making a really vivid outline of what success looks like for them. So I find when I do this, like in truth, it seems kind of cheesy. You know, like it's like, imagine here you're beside the yacht with the, you know, with the tan lady or gentleman of your dreams and you, you know, all that kind of junk, right? Like that's not what success looks like. Or even if I'm saying, you know, but for a business owner, it's kind of like, imagine your phone was ringing steadily Monday to Friday, nine to five, but you had your weekends off because mm -hmm. you had systems that were in place where you're making a, you know, a, a great living, you're providing for your family, but you still have enough time to enjoy your life, right? Then how do you get the failure in? The failure side of it is uh, consequences if uh, you're, I'm reading it directly from the template, right? List the mm -hmm. negative consequences your customers will experience if they don't use your product or service. Right, what are the pain points? Now think about the failure in the sense of like, these may be symptoms that they're already experiencing now, right? So utilizing your brand script, that's really where you put that, right? So it may not be at the bottom of say the website, it might be at the top where you're calling out a question, right? Are you experiencing any of these marketing challenges? And you have the things that you talked about, right? Not getting enough leads, not converting a, a enough of these uh, leads into actual business not understanding you're, you're doing all the things marketing, but you don't understand what's working and what's not working. So you're bleeding out of both ends and not sure what's, what's wrong, right? Hired agencies and felt like you've been burnt in the past. Don't want to go that route again. Hired more of a generalistic person, but then they don't know what the hell they're doing. Like mm -hmm. brought an intern in, hired my niece because she's a social media person from college and doesn't know anything about my business. Mm -hmm. All of these different things that they're experiencing now is like you want to just lean in on mainly because you want them to understand and know that you understand the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Also circling back to the, to the successes, that could be another place for you to then showcase your testimonials as well. Yeah. After state, these are the things that you're going to experience after these problems are solved for you. Right in the guide part is like I understand your frustration. We've been there. We've this is what we've done. This is how what we've done to learn how to solve that. And in the success part, these are the people that we've helped to solve that problem or the problem that you're experiencing. Right. Yeah, and a lot of times for businesses, what failure looks like is in action. You know, like what I'm thinking of is when we did the sales training with uh, Ray. Sorry, I can't think of his last name. Uh, but man, like I could sell it ass off. Uh, Ray Sens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was an absolute monster. Absolute monster where it's like anytime you enter a conversation with him, the only reason you're walking away with your shirt is because he didn't want your shirt. That's right. So you could absolutely convince you like, dude, man, you don't even need it. You're so jacked. You know, or whatever, whatever the approach would be. He was a master with that. But when he was giving us the sales, um, kind of what he would introduce a lot of time was that takeaway of like, yeah, I know this is kind of expensive and, you know, $5,000 seems like a lot. But let's be honest, if you spend $5,000 and it doesn't work for you, are you going to lose your house? No. Are you going to lose your car? You know, probably not. You know, how is your life really going to change except for you need to make another 5000 But what happens if it works? You know, and then he would get you kind of like, and it's true, right? Like people who cognitively work through that, they understand they're being sold, but in a way it suggests what does failure actually look like? Failure looks like inaction. 
-hmm. So I think that's a really good way to maybe implement it in this. And I'm going to try it out and, and hopefully have an example for you. Um, yeah. Where you, yeah, where we give them the takeaway and then also show them, you know, then again, you show them what the success looks like. Yeah, so, I mean, just to add on to that same part, right? The, it's like, well, what what does your life look like if you don't solve this problem? Hmm. If the investment is to then, right, get through and solve the problem, then you have two outcomes. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. But hmm. if you don't even take the option of even trying, right, and you're staying in the same state that you are now in inaction, in, in, in existing pain, then what is it costing you? Mm -hmm. And that brings you right back. And that's why... In all the podcasts, they're saying, talk about the pain point multiple times, right? Because that's essentially why someone's here. You have to convince them. Like the, the whole point of the story brand framework is I can solve this pain point, right? And this is how. And I'm not selling you. What I'm doing is I'm just, I'm, I'm showing you in, in a story. This is well, how I know that we can do it for you. It's the beautiful thing because as we're talking about this dialogue, I'm just scrolling up and down the brand script template. Not mm -hmm. even going into a specific business or anything. And you think about it from that standpoint, it's like, okay, what about the, like when we talk about, say, that problem, how does it make someone feel internally? What are the external, how is it affecting your business? Right. And of the philosophical, right, parts of that, like, what are there, what are these other gurus telling you that you should be doing? Because the SEO guy is going to sell you SEO, the video guy is going to sell you video. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, okay, so then who do I trust? Because every guru is saying that their thing is going to solve that. Right. And that's really, it's, really where the brand script and the process should be able to attract and repel the right people that um, understand that. And it should be able to literally just help to, you know, convince them that you are the right guy for them or you're not the right guy for them, which is fine. Yeah. Well, I think it really goes back to that thing. Like people like to buy, they don't like to be sold. Right. And really, this is what the framework, like to me, this is the biggest strength of it. Somebody's going to come to that conclusion on their own because you've convinced them that the process is going to work for them. I understood the value of the story brand framework. My challenge was I was too close to the problem. I, I was not able to successfully implement that in my previous business. So then I hired a guide who was a, a close friend of mine to be able to do that because I was too close to the problem. Now, circling back and doing that for my own business, it's a lot slower then I, I would normally want to have that. But it's because of those two things, meaning the two things that were one, dialing in my brand script, being more specific with the problems I'm solving, who I'm helping, how I can help them. And then being able to then wireframe my website to where it, it is aligned with the story brand, my brand script as well. So for me, I know it's taking longer, but I also know that for me to, to learn this skill, I have to get more reps in. So if I'm able to articulate that in, in, to other businesses, now being able to do that for myself, I'm going to come away with a skill set, with an ax that's sharper, because not only was I sharpening it by going through this again, but then also hacking and actually chopping and working on that tree because I'm working on this and working through this for, for my business as well. You know? Yeah, great point. And, and honestly, one of the things that it, you really have to keep in mind in, you know, in, in marketing or in really anything you're doing in life, like the first version of it is not going to be, you know, like you can't be upset that you didn't get it day one. You know, the, it, it's so easy to look online, especially in our space and just see guru after guru. Out, like, yo, this guy's got 10 mil. This guy's got 10 mil. This guy's got 10 mil. And you realize like, or you, you start feeling down on yourself and you don't actually realize, you know, how good you are at it and how much, you know, like, you know, depending on where you are on your journey, like a lot of times it's, it's only one or two little changes, which is mm -hmm. what makes that story brand so compelling, right? When you actually get it down, I think probably the major issue for a lot of digital marketing companies is they have the services, they know how to do it, but they don't know how to do it repetitively where they can scale. I can, you know, I could knock it out of the park for a company for two grand a month, but I'm going to need another 10 of them. And if that one has taken me 20 hours a week, uh, that's not how math works. You know, like I don't have that many hours in the day. And then if you hire somebody, they're not going to be able to do it the exact same way that you do. So that becomes the issue. And it becomes very easy to speak to that pain point if that's what somebody has. You know, like for me, that was the issue when I was getting started, right? I just could not figure out how to scale, right? Other people have different issues, you know, like, uh, you know, could be, could be anything, you know. Um, 
they don't know how to price. They don't know how to deliver, you know, like there, there's a bunch of things that people can do. So I think it's a good point. Like if you're on the, if you're using this on your website, you pick the one thing that you think is a, a real like needle mover for your clients that has proved the the ones who've left your reviews. That's a great place to start. Like, What did the positive reviews you already have say, right? Yeah. Cause they're going to say this per, you know, Tom did this for me and it was this and this and this, I have so much extra that. Right. And that, that's a great place to start us of knowing the, what you're really good at. Cause like you could put those on your page too, right. They're going to go a long way for you. Um, before we finish up here, Tom, is there anything else you want to get into on the story brand or. You know, I think just doubling down on that, because once you work through the, um, your brand script, it's going to iterate, it's going to change when you see other examples in the wild, right? You're going to be able to um, iterate from there and add more copy chunks or different phrases in terms of how to say things to your brand script. So that's going to evolve over time, right? So I think it's something that you should be doing constantly. It should be evolving in the sense of, you know, dialing in your messaging, right? You could be saying the same thing, but just in a different way. And however it lands to you first, when you, when you publish it, just get your first rep in, just get your rep in because you can't, it's a lot harder to start from blank canvas than it is to edit something that's already out in the wild that already has some feedback. So I'd encourage you, I would absolutely encourage you just to get started, hit publish, start before you're ready. You're already in business. You more than likely already have a website. So you're all very already started. So think about this first pass with creating your brand script and using this framework as your first revision right into this process and see how it goes for you. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Or 800th revision. If you're me, right. Um, (laughs) It is what it is. Anyways, Tom, always a pleasure. Always fun. Uh, Looking forward to next week when we will get into something else that we haven't talked about yet. Exactly. (laughs) On to the next one. Yeah. Too long. Didn't read today's episode. Stories are more fun than random points.